with Dave Williams again, picking up where we left off on the last segment about uh, Dave's career in talk radio. And uh, you were talking about how the formatics can sometimes get in the way of uh, doing content and uh, relating with the audience. Um, so how, do you, how did you break out of that uh, like just taking control of the format rather than letting the format run you? Well, first of all, I always tried to get, and that was my job as the morning anchor, which is a word I always hated, but um, as, the, as the, the guy primarily in, in charge of keeping us on time, I, I made an effort. I really did, and I think I hit it most of the time. So was it like a top 40 uh, music clock where yeah, uh, kinda. you use a circular clock divided yeah. into a pie of quarter hours and yeah. you have certain things happening at each quarter hour? Is that how yeah. talk radio works as well? Yeah, there are, there are ratings reasons for the timing. I won't go down that rabbit hole, yeah. but I'll just say that, you know, there were times, there were times doing, um, morning news slash talk or we were discussing something that was very interesting or we were doing an interview with somebody who was really really interesting and, and it was going well i'm not going to stop because the clock says <laughs> it's time to do the do the weather you know i mean it's like or, or or the sports guy the sports guy's been sitting in here for 10 minutes he's fine he's not going anywhere but i'm what not going to go national network feed that comes at a specific time did you have to well, do that that's a hard stop that's okay. what they call a hard stop and yeah you have to do that because otherwise you get you know important people involved and then they all get mad at you and but it's still, important to point out that kathy k ran uh abc right abc network uh yeah eventually and for a while it has changed from time to time yeah right i think they're with fox network now I'm not but sure. at the time when you were the program director, it was ABC. Yeah, it was ABC. Yeah. 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 And that leads into the Rush Limbaugh story <laughs> because he was picked up um, by um, like the, the former ABC head of uh, ABC Radio Network. Right. Right. That was Ed McLaughlin, right? Yeah. And uh, do you know much about Ed? Because he's the one who discovered Rush Limbaugh from uh, KFPK. Well, Ed was introduced to Rush Limbaugh. Okay. A fellow by the name of Bruce Marr, who was a wonderful, wonderful guy, uh, great program director in his own right, became a wonderful um, consultant. Uh, he was he was involved with KFBK when I was the program director there. He was actually the one that gave me the very strong advice that I just give up the programming job and just stick with doing the morning show. Not because I was doing a lousy job of programming, but just because it didn't make any sense for me to do both. So anyway already told that uh yes bruce marr i i don't know if bruce was involved in rush's hiring at kfbk rush came along about a year or two before i did at KFBK. yeah he started in 84 and you came on yeah. in 85 right 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 so um and then rush left to go to new york after mclaughlin uh, hired him in 88 and I know that for a fact because he came to my wedding in June of 88 and the next day he was gone. I mean, we, it wasn't like he was a surprise. We knew it, but it was his last, the last thing he did uh, uh, before leaving town was to come to our wedding. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. So what was it like working with Rush Limbaugh before he became a nationally syndicated personality fbk was his first talk show and what it was he he was completely completely different than anybody who had ever, ever done talk um I, when i was program director i took rush to to uh, lunch one day and we were friends we got along very very well we actually hung out a little bit together and we did some socializing not like we're best friends but you know close enough and I took him to lunch one day and I said, look, okay, this is the program director talking to you. Um, I said, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your show. It's your show. You do it. And you're doing great and people love you. People also hate you. But I said, here's the only thing I will advise you. If you don't find something to talk about besides national politics 
and the Russians, your career is going to go right down the toilet. <laughs> that was my big advice. <laughs> 20 years later, he thanked me for not telling him what to do, <laughs> letting him make that decision on his own. But at that time, nobody in local radio was talking about national issues. And there, and there was no, there was no national talk. There was no syndication. There was no satellite, nothing like that. Satellite came along very shortly after that, but it was, you know, it was uh, Dr. Ruth Westheimer mm -hmm. with Sex Talk or Dr. Mora. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it was uh, shrink stuff for the most part. Yeah. But uh, working with Rush was a real treat. He was, man, the guy was great. He was a great, great human being. And I know there are a lot of people that don't want to hear that and just don't believe it and won't believe it. And I say to those people, okay, you, uh, you're, you know, you're absolutely welcome to think about what you thought, uh, what you uh, heard on the radio. Uh, you know, if you hated his politics, you hated the way he talked, you hated the offensive things he said. I understand that. And you have a right to that opinion. But what you don't know is him personally, why he did those things the way he did them and uh, how, how it uh, served him very, very well. And the fact is, that if you were to meet meet the guy in person, I never met anybody who met Rush Limbaugh in person who didn't say, you know what? That guy is really a nice guy, isn't he? He really is. And he so why wasn't. was was he different on the air? Or how would you characterize who he was on the air versus who he was in, in off the air? What, he, he, he was the same guy on the air except for two different things. One is that he was much bigger than life. You know, that's that's kind of uh, radio scary. does that. <laughs> yeah, right. You get bigger than you go. You go out of yourself. You make it bigger. And the other thing was that uh, he didn't he didn't talk about that stuff all the time. He was interested in sports and TV shows and uh, you know the same stuff that we're all interested in. Didn't he really want to be a sportscaster? I don't know for sure. I wouldn't be surprised. He did work for the uh, Kansas and City Royals. Thing. Yeah, Royals, Royals. Yeah, he was doing uh, public relations for him. I think that was just before he came to came to Sacramento. So, uh, um, and he was the same guy. But uh, but if you if you met him in uh, a social setting, I had I had him over to my house a couple three times for little gatherings or big parties and stuff. And he, eventually, I'd look around the room. And go. Well, what happened to Rush? He's sitting over there in the corner with a drink, very, very quietly, by himself. He was uh, something of a wallflower at that point in his life, mm -hmm. and you know, people weren't hovering around him the way they did eventually. But uh, anybody who did approach him and and start talking to him about his show or about politics, he would engage them. He was very polite. He was very friendly. He was open minded. He was listening to what they said. You know, but on the on the talk, it was his show. He was, you know, so he did it his way. Did he set was, the boundaries for his show, or did you set certain parameters for no. him? I don't. I don't know that he had any boundaries. I certainly mm. didn't set them. Mm. Yeah. So knowing that he became like the highest paid person in radio, uh, like he had a seventy million dollar contract at. at I guess toward the oh, end. Uh, allegedly, yeah. W could you have followed that path? No. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, because that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. And besides that, Rush broke the mold. You know, Rush Limbaugh was created, and that that was it. That was the only one. There were a lot of people that tried to copy him. Yeah, but long but, list. But the, but you know, but that's radio. <laughs> That's the that's the essence of being a star in any industry. It's the essence of being a, a movie star or a great musical artist is that you're so unique that you're unlike anybody that's ever been seen or heard before. And that's what makes Rush Limbaugh Rush Limbaugh. And nobody else could be Rush Limbaugh. Like, you know, be kind of like him. But And I, I couldn't do it because I just don't. I just don't have the appetite for uh, for politics or even news, for that matter. 
do you prefer uh, engaging with your audience in a way that's more down to earth, like like not so extreme and emotional? Yeah, I'm just being who I am. You know, mm -hmm. I really am. Uh, it's, it's talk about people being bigger than life on the on the air. I guess I was bigger than life in some ex to some extent. But, You're uh, number one on KFBK, like in the '80s and '90s, throughout the whole. Yeah, in 2000, you left, and then you went to L.A., right? And failed, failed spectacularly. At least at the outset, they hired me to to do the morning show at KABC mm -hmm. with my KFBK co-host at the time, Amy Lewis. We went back, we went down there, and uh, that's that's another long, complicated story, but. Basically, is they didn't know who they were hiring. They didn't know what we do. They, they, you know, they gave us. They just gave us the time slot and says, oh, "You guys have such huge numbers. We want you to do it here. There it is. There's the studio. Get in there and get it done." And we go, "Excuse me. What we did was dependent on a newsroom full of reporters. We had things to talk about. We had we had issues. We had local. I mean." You don't have any of that here. So anyway, uh, when I moved over to KNX, KFWB, uh, they had the resources to do real news radio, and that's what we did there. And they did, and it did, went very well. So KNX and KABC weren't you also at KFWB? Right, KFWB uh, and KNX were both owned by CBS at the time. So um, I started off at KFWB, which was all news at the time. They're not anymore. They're a sports station now. And before that, of course, KFWB was a huge uh, rock and roll station back in the 50s and 60s. They, were, mm -hmm. they, they, owned, they owned the Southland, as we used to say. But um, then they moved me over to KNX, and that was still a CBS station. So you, went, there, you worked at uh, a handful of... Uh, legendary top 40 AM stations that uh, became uh, legendary news stations. Um, in a way, I mean, you were at Croy in the uh, 70s in Sacramento, and then um, uh, did that ever become a talk station? That became no. something else. <laughs> that became some, but, but you were at, uh, you know, uh, KFWB in LA and you were at um, KLIF in Dallas. Right. And right. that was a top 40 station in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. But yeah. on a different frequency. Exactly. The only thing, the only thing uh, that would remain consistent with KLIF was the call letters. It was Cliff in Dallas. Yeah. But, but isn't that ironic how AM was the big thing in the 60s and 70s? And then by the 80s, FM kind of became the big thing, yet AM yeah. became bigger, you know, as talk radio. Well, yeah, you, I mean, you're talking about uh, life before and after FM. And uh, when FM came along, the quality, the, the vocal quality and the music quality was so much, so far superior that when people were given the choice, they wanted to hear that superior sound. No arguing with that. So, but, you know, talk radio, all of its various forms managed to keep AM radio alive and healthy. And it still is.